all on video. There's a reason it's called the war on crime. For the next 60 minutes, we'll put you on the front line. You'll see the scariest pursuits, wildest shootouts, and most outrageous outlaws from around the world. Much of this footage has never been seen before. We've gathered these stories from police. What do we need to take him out here now? News agencies. Oh, no. Even citizens on patrol to show you the stark reality that criminals have declared you the enemy. And knowing your opponent is the only way this war will be won. I'm Sheriff John Bunnell. Being in law enforcement requires the ability to take charge and race into danger while still acting with caution. Officers not only train with tactics and weapons, but on how to keep a cool head while their opponent is losing his. Buenos Aires, Argentina. Two gun-toting bank robbers have just been cornered at a gas station, taking three hostages. But one is already a massive liability. The terrified man has suffered a heart attack. It will prompt one of the most amazing acts of courage you'll ever see. Cameraman Martin Filpo decides he can't sit back and watch a man die. In a heroic move, he volunteers to trade places with the victim. It could be the last valiant act of his life. Using Martin as a human shield, the leader screams out his demands. threatens to blow Martin's head off on national TV. When police hesitate, the murderous man fires warning shots, furiously showing his deadly resolve. But the arrogant hothead has just made a critical error. His last shot leaves the pistol slide open revealing an empty chamber. But he's so intent on scare tactics, he remains oblivious. And when the second robber steps away, officers see their chance to raise some hell and lower the boom. The SWAT team breaches the front entrance, lobbing flashbang grenades through the glass. And when the leader turns his back, an undercover cop puts him in a chokehold. The thief's partner runs back in and ditches his gun in fear. Lawmen pull the captives to safety and drag the cowardly suspects onto the street. The hostages are uninjured, and Martin earns a hero's welcome from his fellow reporters. For crooks, it's all about themselves. But this reporter had the courage to put others first. And when these narrow-minded thieves couldn't see the big picture, cops brought their pathetic little world crashing down. Petersburg, Virginia. Officers tried pulling over this van for phony registration. Now the driver's pulling moves that are asking for a wipeout. Little do cops know, he isn't just hauling ass. He's hauling his girlfriend's three kids in the vehicle. 
and they're about to experience some big boy trouble. He's the around, clear around. That's well. Cornered, the man veers through traffic. Go back left lane. Down, 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 down. But a unit is there to cut him off. Take him out. And the driver flips out. Here we go. When the cruiser pinches the van, the babysitter fights back and loses control. He corkscrews over a barrier and smashes down onto his roof. Hard. Officers rush in and are shocked at what they find. They extract a four-year-old girl followed by a toddler in a car seat. And finally, a baby, only six months old. Incredibly, all are unhurt. As is the suspect, who's just 19 years old, barely more than a kid himself. He's slapped with multiple charges, including three counts of child endangerment, and gets three years in prison. It's not nearly long enough for a petty offender who nearly put his girlfriend's kids on a permanent timeout. Los Angeles, California. Lakers fans swarm the streets to celebrate their team's latest championship. Having snagged two titles in a row, the entire city revels with excitement. Back to back for LA, yeah! Woo! But for some overzealous pumps, it isn't enough to crush the competition. They want to lay waste to the whole downtown area. They start harassing cars that are trying to clear out. Turning into a mob. The hooligans go from rocking vehicles to wrecking them. An abandoned taxi becomes these morons' idea of a smashing good time. After all, what better way to show team support than to foolishly char an automobile? converge on the scene, hoping to disband the reckless delinquents. But the sight of police uniforms doesn't wash away the sea of purple and yellow. It looks like lawmen will have to kick a little tail. And when nightsticks aren't enough, They fire non-lethal rounds at the agitator. The scoundrels scatter at the sound of the blast. But there's still plenty of drunk stragglers left behind. Authorities spend the night busting dozens of the boozers and helping the neighborhood finally cool down. Sadly, the Lakers' consecutive titles led to consecutive years of rioting, giving LAPD plenty of practice in idiot wrangling. Because unfortunately, when the home team wins, the city loses. Coming up. Oh, On world's wildest police video, a robber with a butcher knife carves up a heap of trouble. A speed demon blazes a trail of mayhem using squad cars as speed bumps. And a traffic stop surprise becomes a ballistic shocker. Then later, a psychotic man shoots a cop outside his trailer, then vows to make a bloody last stand. Next. The Dark 
dark of night may seem like the perfect time for criminals to disappear, but choppers now have the perfect counterattack, the night sun spotlight. This beam shines with 30 million candle power, which turns night into day. Compton, California. You can see that guy making a crazy turn right here. A helicopter lights up a motorist who's about to redefine the phrase reckless driving. Cops first tried to stop him for weaving down the road. Just blows by those two black and whites right there. But this punk, who's on parole, is terrified of getting arrested. And unfortunately... Locking up the brakes, whoa! His driving skills are outrageously poor. At every turn, the panic perp mashes the accelerator. Losing it again! Whoa, he just tagged the car! and the cranked wheel and turning tires send him spinning out of control. The renegade recovers from the hit and weaves past another set of cruisers. This guy is driving like a maniac. There's just no other way to say it. Even a bone-rattling run of dips in the road oh, sparks. doesn't slow down his rampage. But the next bend might end it for good. Another hard turn and he spins. Oh, he just clipped another parked car. He turns the street into a demolition derby, making casualties of a parked sedan and his own bumper. But amazingly, he manages to shake off every disaster. This guy has unbelievable luck. Until he meets the next one face to face. Oh, right into an LAPD officer head on. The outlaw smashes into a squad car, mangling both grills. Neither driver is badly hurt, and the suspect still thinks he can run away. But officers quickly show him that's nuts. Whoa! A kick in the groin and a yank to the concrete add up to a rough butt for this destructive runner. They got him. The suspect has been taken into custody. Police find alcohol in the man's car and charge him with felony DUI and a load of traffic offenses. This parolee couldn't manage to stay on the straight and narrow. But his loopy escape had so many hairy twists. He loses it again. Whoa, he just tagged the car. And scary turns. And he spins. Oh, he just flipped another parked car that a final run-in with the law was not only inevitable, it was bound to be a straight-up butt-kicking. They got him. Chatham, Ohio. Officers pull over a female driver for a routine traffic violation. But the routine is broken when they spot a joint inside her car. It's sufficient cause to search the vehicle. But when they pop the trunk, they find a whole different kind of dope. Get out of the, car. the woman's not carrying drugs, but she is carrying a wanted felon. The man is quickly cuffed and restrained, and the driver is charged with harboring a fugitive. Talk about some serious baggage. Unfortunately, this brand of trunk smuggling is all too common. In Alcoa, Tennessee, officers stop this car because the driver and passenger are known friends of a 15-year-old runaway. Sergeant David Carswell and his partner Robert Simmerly asked to search the vehicle, just in case. Sure enough, the girl's in the trunk, hiding under a blanket. Carswell joins Simmerly to help take her into custody. But this stowaway is packing more than a toothbrush. The youngster pulls a gun, sending the cops scrambling for cover as they resist opening fire. Her friends quickly clear the area. The kid gets to the car door, thinking she can drive away. She doesn't realize the cops have the keys. And the moment her attention wavers, 
they grab the gun and take control. All three girls will have some serious explaining to do tomorrow. But thanks to these cool-headed officers, they'll all have a tomorrow. Police never know when a roadside stop will spring a surprise like this. Fortunately for this petite pistolero, the cops showed amazing restraint. North Mesa, Texas. Business is brisk at this swanky antique jewelry store. But just outside, the world's most unswanky robbers are planning a mind-boggling crime. While the male accomplice wrangles their getaway wheelchair, the woman dons a trash bag with eye holes in it, not realizing they're already on video. This would all be rather amusing if not for the huge butcher knife in her left hand. When she enters, customers and clerks see the deranged bag lady and flee toward a rear exit. But the blade-wielding garbage head comes after them. The jewelry repairman retreats to the display area with the black bag bandita demanding he open the cases. Store owner Linda Bradley quickly grabs the stun gun she keeps handy. After all, this doddering villain may not be fast, but she's horrifyingly relentless. As Linda keeps the hefty heister waddling in circles, the repairman heads outside and calls the police. Meanwhile, the jewelry junkie is getting ticked. No one will stand still long enough to be robbed. But when a customer is targeted by the trashy lass, he quickly disarms this hack. Crime lady gets sacked. And the good Samaritan keeps her under control. Even unmasking his opponent as the cops rush in. Relieved, Linda has had more than enough excitement for one day. The stick-up artist is sent to a mental hospital and the getaway chairman goes to jail. Just another crackerjack crime team that bites the dust. Their outlandish scheme used some ridiculous tactics, but the woman's weapon was cutting edge. Thankfully, a customer made sure this two-ply hood got canned. Just ahead, on world's wildest police videos. Cops match wits with a suspected cold-blooded killer. I want to know where she is, too. See who will blink first. I'm flat out telling you that you're not telling the truth. And a hot-to-trot stripper tears up a country road. Don't do it, kid! Until officers turn her truck to jump. The action will leave you breathless. I'm not, I'm not gonna pass out, huh? Next. Crime dramas love to show detectives yelling at suspects in the interrogation room. But real interrogation requires smart psychology and good social skills, because no evidence is more compelling than a criminal freely admitting his guilt. Belleville, Illinois. A homicide detective sits across the table from a suspected killer. I'm flat out telling you that you're not telling the truth. A 17-year-old girl, Ashley Reeves, is missing, and all roads lead to her sometimes boyfriend, Samson Shelton, a 27-year-old driver's ed teacher, and the last person to see Ashley alive. And yeah, well, trust me, me more than anybody right now, I want to know where she is too, Damn. so I can get out of all this. He admits they had a fight, but says he only kicked her out of his car near a park Everybody. and left. The only thing I can say is, when I pulled out of there, she was definitely alive. The lieutenant isn't buying it. I know that Ashley's dead. But you, we listen, don't know that. Listen, I've been doing this too long, partner. And I know that a mistake happened, and I know that you were involved. The experienced interrogator approaches Shelton from every angle. Part friend. You got a lot going for you. 
part salesman. We know this is not a cold-blooded thing. And part snake charmer. But Sam, if you help us find out what really happened to her, things will work the way they should. The detective needs one hook that will draw the truth out. And finally, after several hours of questioning... I just want to go home and explain to Mom and Grandma exactly what happened. He finds it. Your grandma's not here. Your mom's not here. But you know what? In a way, they are. The detective hones in on Shelton's family ties and his family honor. Unfortunately, right now, Sam, you ain't telling us the truth, and you need to, for Mom, for Grandma. The officer even shows some compassion. But it's not just sympathy. It's a way to finally dig out the truth. Can I go show you what happened? Please. Please. And he hits pay dirt. I did the stupidest thing. What? I, I, I don't know if I would take her to the hospital. It was so obvious. Right. I tied this thing around the neck to make it look like someone choked her out there. Like, I was just getting ready for this throw her bleed. What, like, what direction is it out near where? I literally have to show you. The squad follows Shelton to the wooded scene of the crime. Okay, came in there. It's been 30 hours, and he can't remember where he left her. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I came in the woods, and I just started moving. Finally, <laughs> they make a grim discovery. The remains of Ashley Reeves. I if I could get some light. But this victim has a story of her own. <coughs> She's breathing. She's breathing. Get EMT. Get EMT. I can see your eyes moving with the light, Ashley. Can you can you say anything? Her neck is broken, but she's alive. Ashley. Can you hear me? And we'll soon be safe, thanks to the skill of the interrogator. Secure him, OK? Amazingly, after more than a year of rehabilitation, Ashley Rees will make a full recovery. Samson Shelton pleads guilty to attempted murder and gets 20 years behind bars. It took a cop using every trick in his book to put this heartless grandma's boy behind bars. I did the stupidest thing. And give a young girl a new lease on life. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Crooks know that police in this country don't mess around. So when this car thief spots motorcycle cops on his tail, it's all or nothing time. The man roars up oncoming lanes. And when he hits a curb choked with buses, he tries to blow up the gridlock. The lead motor cop blocks him in, prompting a hellish response from the con. takes his rampage in reverse, nearly crushing the first patrolman against a bus. Then he mows down two more police on bikes and pulverizes the traffic behind him. Cops respond quickly, shredding the car with bullets as he throttles forward into the log jam again. The wreck finally puts his sedan out of action. Officers swarm his ride, kicking out his window and nabbing him before he can unleash any more hell. But after creating all this wreckage, his fight is gone. It's shocking how quickly this went from a stolen car to attempted murder. police acted even faster to make sure his deadly assault was snuffed out. Still the cops on world's wildest police videos. A man on the brink of death. Come on, please, let's stay with it, buddy. Come on. 
triggers a wave of collapsing bodies. Mama got another one past Abba. And a drunk driver suffers a hit and run from himself. Next. Call for an ambulance, and it will be there within minutes. But a cop who's already on patrol could be there within seconds. That's why officers learn emergency medical techniques. Because for some people, minutes might be too late. Darlington, South Carolina. Keep going, keep going. A man has just gone into cardiac arrest. First on the scene, officers immediately start CPR. Come on, please, let's stay with it, buddy. Come on. Despite panicked relatives adding to the tension, the police don't buckle under the pressure. Man, we gotta stay back. Even when a family member does. We do it again. Stay back. Man, we got another one past that An officer with a shoulder cam sees the woman faint. I'm having easy to wake up, okay? Now they have two victims out cold. Emergency workers soon arrive. Come on, stay with Come on, man. And stabilize the man. Leaving only one person left to revive. I'm having need you to get off, okay? He's coming too. Both ailing parties are on the road to recovery. How you doing? Thanks to patrolman's medical training, that helped them deal with this double trouble. In Steubenville, Ohio, State Trooper Robert Bodo discovers a driver stopped on the side of the road. Are you all right? I don't know. I'm having a hard attack tonight. I'm actually hard attack already. Do you want an ambulance? No, no, I don't got no job, no insurance or nothing. This guy might just be suffering from severe anxiety. Or not. He's composed enough that the lawman is convinced this is the real thing. The driver said he's had past heart attack, he's having chest pain. He notifies medics, preparing for the worst. And when he gets back... You okay? John, you all right? The worst has happened. John. John. The man is unconscious dying in front of the trooper's eyes. 41, he's unresponsible. Photo works fast, quickly performing CPR. <laughs> and even before EMTs arrive, another cop rushes in with a defibrillator. Yeah, get that thing hooked up. Using the machine, the troopers restart his heart. That's it, John. Stay awake. Stay awake, buddy. <laughs> And by the time paramedics pull up, he's breathing on his own. Making this the kind of arrest, troopers are happy to see someone escape. These officers' emergency know-how proved to be crucial. Come on, please, let's stay with it, buddy. Come on. Because faced with heart-stopping action, both the patients and the cops Stay with me, John. Came through. That's it, John. Stay awake. Stay awake, buddy. With flying colors. Santa Fe, New Mexico. On a stark desert highway, a swervy drunk is about to create quite a scene. Luckily, there are barely any other cars on this isolated stretch of road. But it only takes one for this guy to be a menace. He skids wildly toward a lone oncoming driver, nearly creaming the motorist head on. And when he cuts back, he nearly takes out the only other vehicle for miles. Thankfully, the man stops on his own and decides he's done running. But he's still headed for a catastrophic wipeout. He slumps out of his pickup, and the 6,000-pound ride rolls back over his legs. For now, the alcohol seems to have dulled the pain. 
but he'll feel it later, when he's in traction and incarcerated. The suspect's blood alcohol was twice the legal limit, which made him a threat on the streets, no matter how empty they were. Fortunately, he stopped before maiming somebody. Unfortunately, his truck didn't give him the same courtesy. Just ahead, on world's wildest police videos, a driver who's about to burn alive you gotta get out of the car, buddy. is too dead drunk to notice. I'm good, I'm good. And a racy stripper lives life in the fast lane. Go do it, kid. Until she leaves her backside exposed. Kaiser, Oregon. Officers are about to face one of the strangest rescues of all time. They find an overturned sedan next to a burning transformer. Is there anybody in the car? But there's an even bigger problem. Sir, are you okay? The drunk driver who hit the pole. You gotta get out of the car, buddy. Come on. Surprisingly, sees no need of being rescued. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Hey, climb out to me, coffee. You gotta climb out. Look outside, there's a fire. I've been there, done that. The blaze is quickly getting intolerable. Get out of the car, dude. I'm good. But this guy is actually resisting their help. Good, I'm good, I'm good. Yes, there's a huge out. fire right behind you, man. Officer Rodney Bamford breaks the back window and desperately tries to reach the man. Give me your hand, I'm gonna pull you out. I'm good. The flames become so intense, the rescuers are driven away. Come on, come on. But they're determined to save this lush, in spite of himself. Grab it. Come on. Your leg's stuck. No, no. Finally, they wrench him free and drag him to safety. Just seconds before the fire takes over. This man was the working definition. You gotta get out of the car, buddy. A blind drunk. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Fortunately, cops overcame both the fire and the victim. Come on, give me your hand, I'm gonna pull you out. Been there, done that. Giving him a chance to live down his stupidity. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Forsyth County, Georgia. Lieutenant W.C. Barrett pursues a woman suspected of running meth for a local cartel. The redhead also works as a stripper named Sprinkles in between drug deals. And apparently, she's not bashful on this country highway either. The saucy supplier rips up the road in her lightning quick convertible, flashing her sporty ride at oncoming vehicles and flaunting some dangerous curves. When Barrett slows to negotiate a narrow gap in traffic, the risque renegade pulls away at 125 miles an hour. But at these speeds, she's flirting with catastrophe. A sweeping curve nearly sweeps her off the road. The lieutenant yells out a plea. And a warning. But this meth mule is sure she can buck these cops. Ahead, they ready a trap. And when she reaches the blockade, she's left completely exposed. With the cruiser cutting off the left lane and a truck blocking the right exit, this chick is a sitting duck. Sprinkles gets spanked. 
and knocked off the road. Officers race in, quickly snatching her keys. Put your hands up! Normally, men give this dame a much warmer reception. But when you cause this kind of frustration, it only earns you some jail time. This dope running strip teaser fled from cops the same way she lived. Fast and loose. She thought she had the goods to get away. But when she wouldn't end her dance with danger, Don't do it, Lieutenant Barrett made sure it was curtains. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. I need all the you can give me. It's time to witness a department's most drastic hour when a maniac with a shotgun shoots one of their officers in cold blood. And you won't believe how he continues his reign of terror. Trying to take every last cop with him. Next. On average, more than 160 officers are killed in the line of duty every year in the United States. That's a sobering number, and a reminder that having safe communities comes with a cost that we should never take for granted. Springfield, Ohio. 69 is down, I repeat, 69 is down. It's every cop's nightmare call. An officer's been shot. I need all the units you can give me. This morning, Deputy Suzanne Hopper responded to a disturbance complaint at this trailer park. Without warning, a man ambushed her with a shotgun, leaving her wounded outside his home. He is on her back, directly in front of the doorway there. Now, the deranged shooter, Michael Ferryman, has barricaded himself in his motorhome preventing officers from approaching their fallen comrade. RP-69's been shot, and I cannot check her. I cannot check her. Ferryman has a violent rap sheet, and courts have declared the ex-con criminally insane. And as troopers take position around the trailer park... Find some type of barricade to stay behind to take cover. The heavily armed lunatic is about to prove why. His senseless rage explodes in a barrage of gunfire, sending bullets right past an explosive propane tank. Deputies respond, unloading dozens of rounds through his window. The fire teams disengage to reassess the threat. It will be a costly tactic. Perryman takes advantage of the break and fires, ripping bullets into patrolman Jeremy Bloom's arm and shoulder. As the lawman scrambles to safety, SWAT teams get ready to breach the trailer. But the gunman's silence soon makes it clear they won't have to. The officers discover that the wounds he sustained earlier have taken their toll. And Ferryman is found dead inside his mobile home. Officer Bloom will recover from the gunshots. But sadly, Suzanne Hopper will die from her injury. It's a tragedy that leaves no one involved unaffected and draws America's attention to the sacrifice of cops on the front lines. Deputy Sheriff Suzanne Hopper was known as the go-to person in her department. No task was too large or too small. Today we remember not just a fine officer, but a wife, a mother, and a stepmother. No one knows why this disturbed man went out guns blazing. 
But when he took down an officer, this job got personal. And every cop on the scene took the ultimate risk to ensure his insanity didn't spill more blood. Mayhem breaks out. Cops will play any role to stop it. From law enforcers to rescuers Come on, please, no. to sacrificial heroes, keeping the streets a safe place for citizens and a lousy place for crooks.